going after Tehran. The U.S. government is seeking a global coalition to counter what it calls Iran's destabilizing activities. But what kind of a coalition will it be? And could it involve a military element? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Mohammed Jamjoum. A threat to the world. That's how U.S. President Donald Trump's administration is describing Iran's government. The State Department has announced plans to form an international coalition to counter what it calls Iran's destabilizing influence. But it's not clear what shape this coalition will take or whether it involves any type of military component. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo was expected to give further details in his first foreign policy address on Monday. We'll get to our guests in a moment, but first, let's have a listen to what the State Department spokeswoman, Heather Nauert, had to say on this issue. The United States will be working hard to put together a coalition, not unlike the DISIS coalition, where we bring together a lot of countries from around the world with the specific goal of looking at the Iranian regime through a more realistic lens, not just through the lens of the nuclear deal, but rather through all of its destabilizing activities that aren't just a threat to, uh, to the region, but are a threat to the broader world. Since coming to office, President Donald Trump has made clear his strong opposition to the 2015 Iran nuclear deal. And earlier this month, he pulled the U.S. out of the multi-country agreement and reimposed economic sanctions. The U.S. has blamed Tehran for providing Houthi rebels in Yemen with weapons and has presented evidence of what it says are Iranian-made missiles being fired into Saudi Arabia. Iran's support for the Lebanese group Hezbollah and its intervention in Syria are also a problem for the U.S., Trump has strongly condemned Tehran for its support of the Syrian president. All right, let's introduce our panel. In Tehran, Mohammed Ansari Far. He's a political analyst. Joining us on Skype from Washington, D.C., Hillary Mann Leverett, a former U.S. diplomat and negotiator with Iran. And here in Doha, Mahjoub Zweri, a professor of Middle East politics and Iran at Qatar University. Welcome to you all. Hillary, let me start with you. The U.S. State Department is saying that they want to form a coalition to counter Iran's destabilizing influence. From your vantage point, what is the main takeaway from Heather Nauert's remarks? What exactly does this mean? I think she's previewing a very important speech that the new Secretary of State, Pompeo, will deliver on Monday here in Washington, D.C. at the very conservative uh, organization, the Heritage Foundation. It is to be his signature foreign policy uh, speech, his first one, and it's to lay out a very tough, uh, I think probably very insulting case against Iran, to lay the ground for what they call a comprehensive strategy to contain uh, what they see as problematic activities by Iran and to, again, reassert U.S. dominance uh, in the Middle East through a coalition, including Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates and Israel, all together to contain, uh, to contain Iran. That is what Pompeo is expected to unveil on Monday, and I think that's what they're focused on. Mahjoub, I see you nodding your head there um, as Hillary was speaking. What do you think we're going to be hearing from U.S. Secretary of State Pompeo? I think he, um, he was trying to respond to the concern of the President Trump when he announced 2017, the national strategy, national security strategy of the United States, where he had, uh, basically repeated Iran more than 11 times in the strategy and North Korea. The debate about in that strategy that Iran is actually the main concern of the administration and um, is destabilizing the Middle East. Of course, um, uh, the new uh, Secretary of State is trying to echo the view of the president when it comes to Iran. As we know, uh, Trump has announced uh, Iran um, uh, basically as one of the, I would say, troublemaker in the region. Um, and he uh, started with the withdrawal of the nuclear deal. And now he's actually trying to shape his foreign policy towards Iran after that step. I think. What we are seeing is a very important step towards um, uh, limiting what Iran is doing in the region by relying on its traditional players in the region who have failed so far to face Iran and they failed also to respond to the concern of international community, including the United States. 
Mohammed, in her remarks, Heather Nauert also added that this coalition will not be anti-Iran because the U.S. stands firmly behind Iran's people. For you, from your vantage point, does this raise the specter once again that the U.S. will pursue regime change in Iran? I think what uh, Mr. Trump and American government is pursuing is just to weaken Iran's regime. And I think this is the continuation of the past policy of American, all governments, uh, American governments during the last four decades. And I think what they talk about uh, Iran's regional power or influence and the missiles is only an excuse to pressurize Iran economically. And I, as everybody knows that during the last 40 years, the pressure from America against Iran has not minimized at all. And I think this is not the end of American pressures on Iran. And we should be waiting for more pressures from America, American governments in near futures and also in the next years. Hillary, one of the things that Heather Nauert did not address uh, when she was speaking was whether or not this coalition would include some kind of a military component. Do you believe that the U.S. is headed towards some kind of military confrontation or that this coalition that will be forming is headed towards some kind of military, uh, uh, um, you know, confrontation with Iran? Well, certainly past precedent of how the United States has behaved. And, you know, I was in the, the Bush White House, the Bush 41 White House in 2001, 2002, in the lead up to the invasion of Iraq. And they, they were saying some of those same things early on, that, of course, they, the U.S. stands by the people of Iraq and uh, is just trying to change Iraq, Iraqi behavior and benefit the Iraqi people. So I think, unfortunately, we are seeing a redo of that kind of rhetoric, the kind of axis of evil rhetoric, that it's all about the Iranian regime like it was about the Iraqi regime. We have not heard yet about a military component, but I would not be surprised if on Monday, Secretary Pompeo says something in his speech about expediting the shipment of what they call bunker-busting bombs uh, to Israel, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates. The idea that the United States would be directly involved in a U.S. type of invasion of Iraq vis-a-vis -vis Iran, I think is something that President Trump has taken off the table. But he is very interested in selling more and more advanced U.S. weaponry to Israel, Saudi Arabia, and the Emirates for them to, uh, to take military actions as they see fit. And I think we're seeing that in terms of the U.S. greenlighting of Israeli actions in Syria and elsewhere. What Trump is doing is green lighting, as we often say here in Washington, giving the green light to others to take more assertive, more aggressive, more militaristic actions that Trump doesn't want to do himself. Mahjoub, if you could expand on what Hillary was saying there, uh, based on the fact that uh, so much weaponry is being sold to the Middle East, do you think that this is going to precipitate an all-out arms race in the region? Of course, um, but let's let's also put things in a in a context. What Trump is doing now, actually, he is repeating what the, the Bush, the son, has done basically against Iran uh, when it comes to form a coalition against Iran, and that coalition basically from you know uh, from the same players uh, Hillary has mentioned, but also this um, you know uh, this kind of of, of coalition always failing because of they need another support, another support can come from Europe. With the absence of Europe of, on this, on this, in this case, I don't think so that Trump will be able to continue on his, on his you know, uh, uh, rhetoric about Iran. For, so for, for, for this, I, I have to, to, to uh, um, uh, remind the viewers that what's, what's, what's been done so far is, is a sort of a strategy to um, uh, mobilize uh, um, m more countries against Iran which Iran is aware of, and they, in the past, they were able to uh, tackle this with even before um, the uh, before the, the nuclear deal. And I think what we see now is start this kind of repetition of that approach. This takes me to the second point, which basically, you know, um, the United States or the Trump administration can, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, pr shape his the plan based on uh, 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 limiting the movement of Iran in the region. However, we know that Iran has done all of this under the eyes of the United States, including 
what was what Iran was doing in Iraq, for example, since 2005. We know that the administration at that time, a deal, you know, had a deal with Iran to uh, secure Baghdad. So there are a lot of gaps when it comes to uh, form such a coalition against Iran. There is mistrust of the American approach, and which makes me feel that even those players, uh, Hillary has mentioned, um, uh, uh, Israeli and uh, Emiratis and Saudis, I'm not sure they are singing the same song. Mm -hmm. Everyone has her own agenda. And even, you know, buying or selling more weapons to those countries, we know that Israelis is, is, is having a sort of support from the United States. Mm -hmm. Saudis and Emiratis, all of what they can buy, I'm not sure they will be able to help in any kind of military operation in the future if it happens against Iran. So there is a lot of, you know, as we say, devils in detail. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of details. I don't think so that if everything happens in Washington, they are taking it into consideration when it comes to the region, which already very complicated on, in its, politi uh, in its politi in politics and also on different players who are engaging in this politics. Mohammed, do you believe that the U.S.'s main aim here is to get concessions from Iran? And do you believe that that could actually happen, that the Iranian regime would be in a position where they would give up something? I think uh, what uh, Americans are after is just to pressurize Iran to gain more secessions from Iran and at the same time to weaken Iran as a symbol of resistance in the region. So if the Iran, they want to show to other parts of the world, especially to the neighboring countries and Islamic countries, that confronting America and coming out of the umbrella of America would cost you so much and you will uh, reach nowhere. So what they are doing, trying to do is just to say that Iran cannot be the symbol of resistance, but I think that cannot work and it has not proved that it's not work. It does not work and I think the Americans at the end will have no choice but to come along with Iran and to have some sharing of the regional powers and also to let Iran to have friendly relations with the Western powers, including America. And I think what Iran is after is not just challenging the Western powers or even America, but to have in its own independence and to have you know, its own aims and ambitions. And, not to, and uh, in the last few years, Iran has not, be, has not been invading any country, uh, even threaten any country, mm -hmm. except Israel, because we, Iran thinks that Israel is behind all these pressures against Iran. Hillary, let's switch gears here for a second and talk about the Iran nuclear deal, which the U.S. pulled out of just in the past couple of weeks. Now, European leaders have been really trying to ensure that this deal can survive, but do you see a scenario here in which the deal can go on? Uh, I do not at this point, unfortunately. I think that the United States was a critical uh, component of the deal, not just for or not even about uh, the U.S. direct role in in the deal. The key problem, I think, and I, this is this is important, and I think lost on on many who look at look at these issues. The key problem that Trump had with the deal was that it did nothing to change fundamentally the U.S.-Iranian relationship. For the, from the perspective, from what I've heard from within the White House, from President Trump and from Secretary of State Pompeo, the key problem is that it did nothing to help the United, the United States in terms of its security, and perhaps more importantly, did nothing to help the United States economically. To the extent that the Iran nuclear deal was going to help anyone, from their perspective, it was to help European companies and Asian companies, not American companies companies. So part of what you're seeing here is, I think, very much a U.S. attempt to not only get out of the deal, but to destroy the deal, to destroy any uh, possibility, ability for Euro European companies and even Asian companies to really reap the benefits of a U.S. withdrawal from the deal. What Trump and Pompeo are positioning themselves to do, like with North Korea, is to hit Iran as hard as they possibly can and to really get rid of even our allies in the multilateral context to set Iran up to have to deal with the United States bilaterally. Now, that's President Trump and Secretary of State Pompeo. The added complication here, which is very important, is the new national security advisor, Bolton. 
Bolton is not really on the same page as Trump and Pompeo in trying to set up a kind of bilateral dynamic between the U.S. and Iran, where the U.S. hits Iran hard, but at the end of the day is open to and interested in a negotiation for what they call a bigger, better deal. Bolton, on the other hand, is all about and only about regime change, overthrowing the government of Iran. That has been his long-held belief and policy. And I worked with him in the State Department during the Bush administration. That is his deeply held belief and policy going, at, going back since the, the formation of the Islamic Republic of Iran in 1979. Mahjoub, you heard Hillary there talking about the effects on companies that uh, the pull out of the U.S. from this deal. Um, of course, there are European leaders, uh, there are leaders within the EU that are trying to protect European companies to try to pass laws or activate mechanisms by which European companies that are now trying to do business in Iran would be protected from U.S. sanctions. But many don't think that that would really be effective, that there's a way to guarantee those protections. And big companies like Total have already said that they are going to pull out of any business prospects with Iran. What do you think? Is there a way for European leaders, countries, the EU, to protect these companies from U.S. sanctions? I think it's unlikely. I mean, this deal cannot be survived without the United States. Then, let's remember, 2005, there was a deal presented by the um, uh, U by UK, France, and and, and Germany, um, and that was that was a, an, an excellent deal at that time. Iranians rejected that deal basically because Washington was not on board at that time. The main concern, as it is now is regime change because they wanted they wanted Washington to be on board to make sure that there is no regime change on the table now with the you know pull out of the deal i think the whole issue of regime change is coming back to the table that's one aspect the other aspect the economic aspects i'm not sure the european companies will be able to survive and to work in iran without having sort of um, you know uh, uh, green light um, from the from washington there will be not be uh, there will be no, no, no sanction against them because at the end of the day this company is behind interest and this interest if it's not being secured I'm not sure they will be able to to work uh, in Iran as you mentioned to tell one of those companies uh, it started to work in Iran after the deal they are now thinking seriously to pull out and and China will replace them that is that's an example but there are another, other examples from Germany which which is which has a, a great business with with Iran and I think that's that that makes me uh, say that the deal will not survive, actually, and, and we may see Europeans um, facing real challenges of protecting or, or, or maintaining the deal uh, with Iran. And I think that is the reason why we see Iran is engaging with the Europeans, uh, trying to see what is the possibility, what the European can do so the, the deal can maintain. If not, I would not be surprised if Iran decided to pull out of the deal as well, because without the United States, the whole issue of regime change will be on the table again, and Iran will not be will not be able to commit itself of of just you know uh, listening to what Washington is doing without having actions. Mohammed, Iranian President Rouhani has said he wants the deal to survive. That they are going to work with European leaders to try to ensure the survival of the nuclear deal. What do you think? Do you believe that it can survive at this point? Um, I think it's very difficult as a fact because the. America is the main trade partner to European countries. But I think what would happen, actually, what would happen is that Americans behind the scene will do some business with uh, European Western countries to say, guy, you can have some trades with Iran. We will have blind eyes on them. But we, you should do that in very limited uh, scale. So I think what would the uh, Americans do with the Europeans is just to let them have some business with Iran and even uh, safeguard their co some of their companies, but not all of them. But uh, to bring more, more pressure on Iran's oil and gas industry. So to, uh, to um, do not let Iran to have much more money for them. Um, uh, oil exports or gas exports, and even to have gas exports to neighboring countries, to have more influence on neighboring countries because Iran is trying to export gas to Oman, to Iraq, and also already is uh, exporting gas to Turkey, and maybe to India and Pakistan 
and Afghanistan, and it, it, it will be a very big tool in Iran's hands. So Americans are trying to deprive Iran from that tool. Would they would pressurize European countries not to work with Iran, mm -hmm. collaborating with Iran in oil and gas industry? That's why we see that Total is pulling out of Iran's oil and gas uh, complexes. Mm -hmm. And I think this will not work very well because there are other companies from China, even Russia, mm -hmm. to help Iran to uh, develop its gas and oil industry. And I think it would only sl uh, slower Iran's push towards a big country in the region, to be a big country in the region. Hillary, of course, Mohammed was talking there about uh, Russia and China. Now, Russia and China, of course, uh, were angered by uh, President Trump's decision to pull out of the uh, Iran deal. But, you know, how much of an advantage do they have right now to really go in and film, fill the political and diplomatic vacuum created by the U.S. pulling out of the Iran nuclear deal? I think that's a very, very tricky uh, issue. For Russia, it has developed really a strategic relationship with Iran, particularly uh, in the context of their cooperation over Syria. That relationship has developed very steadily, very significantly, and really strategically over Syria, and I think will help Iran uh, to be able to work with Russia to protect Iran's interests going forward more broadly vis-a-vis uh, -vis the United States. Also because Russia is the subject of many U.S. sanctions, so Russia has a lot of common interest there with Iran. China is really the big, the decisive economic player, and I think there is a real question mark about what China will do. China, surprisingly, I think to many in Beijing and even to, to people, uh, I think, in, in Iran and some here in Washington, is surprisingly under a great deal of pressure from Trump's White House over, over sanctions that the United States has imposed on China for some of its huge telecommunications companies, for example, ZTE. The sanctions that the U.S. imposed on ZTE sent that company into near bankruptcy within a couple of days, not a couple of weeks or a couple of months, but within a couple of days. And so the economic power, the technology that the United States has that it is using to hold over China as part of its bilateral talks on trade, broader trade deals, but also on Iran, could be very important. And how China proceeds will be, I think, watched very carefully here. It is not, it's not a done deal that China is going to go into Iran and take up all of these economic deals in defiance of the United States. I think that is that is a real question mark. Mahjoub, it looked like you wanted to jump in there. We only have a couple of minutes left. Uh, what did you want to add? I think I think China and Russia uh, they are in a critical situation because um, Russia has interest uh, to show that it is the main player in the Middle East in the last uh, 10 years, and it's influential as well, uh, especially what, after what we see in Syria, the sort of collaboration between uh, Russia and Iran. Um, China, I think uh, they are facing real challenges, um, especially with the fact that um, you know, the, 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 the aspect of technology with the United States is, is, ab is absolutely ahead of China. That's the main challenge. However, um, Chinese is still, they have uh, their own way to, to work with Iran. Um, especially on the uh, gas and oil, and uh, even be, be through Kimawe uh, as well. But I think they, they have a potential to work with Iran. But again, um, Chinese um, and Russia, we witness their you know their behavior in the in the past. They were not really tough and 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 really hard when it comes to the critical uh, times. We saw that Iran. Uh, we saw that, for example, Russia approved two, three uh, uh, resolution of sanctions against Iran, mm -hmm. and they actually reject to uh, use the veto. So I'm not sure that they will be really 100% um, uh, mm -hmm. with Iran. However, they, try to, they will try to act that they are the allies of Iran, uh, at least uh, as, uh, in, the, in, the couple of, of, in the next couple of months. All right, we've run out of time, so we're going to have to leave it there. Thanks to all our guests, Mohammed Ansari Far, Hillary Mann Leverett, and Mahjoub Zweri. Thank you. And thank you, too, for watching. You can see the program again anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com. And for further discussion, go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Mohammed Jamjoum, and the whole team here, bye for now.